This is Cameron Chai from Amazon.com on behalf of VCAM, coming to you from the Carbon Fibre Future Directions Conference in Geelong, Australia. The conference has been organised by VCAM and Deakin University and is sponsored by VCAM, Deakin University and the Victorian State Government. Today I'm speaking to Assistant Professor Geoffrey Wiggins from the University of Southern Mississippi and I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome Geoffrey to the program. Thank you. So Geoffrey, could you tell us a bit about what your department and your, your research team does at the University of Southern Mississippi? Sure. Uh, University of Southern Mississippi is uh, one of a handful of universities in the United States that specializes in polymer science and engineering. Uh, that is uh, primarily a chemistry-based uh, program. We have uh, degrees at uh, PhD, master's, and bachelor level it, in, in our department and we focus primarily on the synthesis and analysis of polymeric materials. Okay, and more specifically with relation to carbon fiber composite type materials, you guys work more with the matrix materials rather than the fiber materials? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, we, we, would, uh, we would focus primarily at the molecular level of uh, what we call matrix science and engineering, uh, which is an opportunity to gain more performance out of carbon fibers and carbon fiber composites. Okay, and you were, tell, you were saying to me before we started the interview that uh, you've done some work on pre-pregs. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, pre-pregging is, uh, is a manufacturing process that introduces uh, matrix chemistries to carbon fibers. Uh, the pre-preg materials are the materials that would be used, say, by the aerospace industry or by defense. Uh, for actually manufacturing uh, products. So at some point in time you need to introduce matrix chemistries uh, to, to the fibers and so this is one of several processes that, that accomplishes that. And the chemistries that you develop, do they help bond the, the, the fibers to the matrix materials? Well, you know, ma 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 matrix chemistries play numerous roles in, in the performance of composites. Uh, we call these matrix critical properties. Uh, th th things such as the uh, thermal performance of the composite, uh, the chemical resistance and uh, chemical properties of the composites, uh, adhesion properties of the composites, uh, physical aging and environmental degradations that composites might undergo, uh, strength uh, and adhesion uh, to the fibers are all are all critical to the to the performance of the matrix. And so, so we focus on on these types of properties for advancing uh, structural performance of composite materials. Okay, and what about nanotechnology has been a, a pretty popular area of research in, and been integrated into a lot of materials type applica applications and, and application based research over the last few years. Have you guys been involved with much nanotechnology? Yeah, we, uh, we are involved I extensively in, in nanoscience and nanotechnology. Again, uh, you know, nanoparticles are dispersed within um, matrices typically and so that matrix quite often are Polymeric, and so so we study the uh, the performance enhancements of uh, nanoparticles, the dispersion of nanoparticles uh, within uh, within matrices, as well as the stabilization of those nanoparticles within the matrix to achieve performance. And what about is there any problem with with putting nanoparticles into the into the matrix materials? When you when you put them into prepregs, like do, do, does the the carbon fiber structure there act as like a filter for them for the nanoparticles and such that you get a, a non-uniform dispersion of them once you've put them into the prepreg material? Yeah, I think the uh, you know what, when you think about a nanoparticle, uh, you're, you're talking about a a particle that is is extremely small from a size scale. Uh, the the goal. Uh, for any type of nanotechnology is to achieve what we call molecular level dispersion so that these so these particles are truly uh, separated from each other uh, what nanoparticles tend to do is agglomerate and stay together and so once we achieve some level of uh, separation and dispersion uh, full dispersion at the nano level uh, 
the trick then becomes to, s to stabilize those dispersions such that over time these particles don't migrate and they tend to want to agglomerate and recombine. Uh, so, so the techniques that we use to disperse and stabilize, uh, and the idea is, is that they would, uh, uh, they would remain stable uh, throughout the lifetime of the product. Okay, and I've spoken to people earlier on in other interviews that where they, they're trying to increase the mechanical properties of, of the carbon fiber materials themselves. Mm -hmm. through, through the research you're doing, have you got any feel for how much you can improve the mechanical properties of the matrix materials through the research that you're doing? Well, yeah, I think that uh, there's, you know, we, we come at it from, from the other way. We come at it from the, from the point of view of the chemistry and how the chemistry of the matrix can, can increase the performance of, of the fibers and, or, the, or the nanoparticles themselves. And so uh, there's, we're studying ways of building molecules around these, uh, uh, around these particles or around these uh, fibers such that we can uh, optimize the, uh, the performance of the chemistry to, s to maximize the expected benefits of the reinforcements. And so, so the obviously the, the outcome of your research, you hope to see it used in things like in aerospace, the, or the automotive industry, perhaps even sporting goods and things like that? Yeah, my, uh, my research funding is uh, focused in, in the areas of uh, sports and high performance materials, uh, aerospace, uh, consumer products, and defense. And so can you see carbon fiber materials in the future being used in, in, in applications that they're not currently being seen in? We are constantly working with uh, uh, various agencies and corporations to look at uh, metal replacements uh, through the use of fiber reinforced composites. Have you got any perhaps examples you could give us that, of areas where you think the carbon fiber material, carbon fiber composite materials might be used in the, in the not too distant future? Well, I think that, you know, the way that I view it is uh, if, you, if you think about what's going on in the aerospace industry with, uh, with the use of carbon fiber materials, you know, if you go back, uh, you know, a hundred years ago, these these uh, ships and planes were being built out of wood and fabric. As we learned to design with metals, uh, the, there was a material transformation of these of these uh, products, uh, ships and airplanes, uh, to metals and, and metal alloying. And today, we're on the cusp of a another material transformation, which is transforming metals to polymer matrix composites, uh, polymer uh, matrix fiber composites. Uh, the benefits of these materials in weight savings, uh, performance, and longevity, life cycle economics are just simply too great. So as companies like Boeing and uh, Northrop Grumman uh, drive these advancements, we'll see rapid proliferation of carbon fiber and other fiber reinforced polymeric materials to replace metals in, in consumer markets. All right, Jeffrey, thanks very much for telling us about what you guys do and where, where you hope to see the carbon fiber composite materials market go. And uh, we thank you for your time. Thank you for having me.